The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things. For I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by independent research, the most popular West Coast program. In gasoline, you know, it takes extra quality to go farther. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Two-year plan. It had taken Eddie Davis exactly two years to swing it. And two years was very good time, even for a smart lawyer like Eddie. They'd all thought he was crazy when he left a promising job with the established law firm of Garden, Walker, and Reed to set up his own practice with just one client on the books, old Peter Jackson. Now, Mr. Davis, as you know, my holdings run around $5 million. I must have a man in whom I can place complete trust. I see. I think you'll discover you can trust me, Mr. Jackson. That remains to be seen, Mr. Davis. That remains to be seen. Yes, you went to work for Peter Jackson, Eddie. Because he needed someone he could trust those five millions to. Only a few months later, he was singing a different <laughs> tune. Eddie, Eddie, that's wonderful. No, nothing to it, Pete. <laughs> you, you say old Hamilton didn't know Columbia stores wanted that corner of his? Well, you don't think he'd let it go for 40000 if he <laughs> did, do you? <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, believe it or not, this time it isn't the money. For the first time in my life, I've got the jump on Hamilton. <laughs> You know, Eddie. Yeah? You're doing a great job for me. A great job. The next jump was the long one, wasn't it, Eddie? It took a lot of work and more than a year of waiting. But you'd figured it for the long pull and kept telling yourself you had all the time in the world. You knew when Peter finally came around, he'd, uh, he'd drop it in with other business like a casual remark on the weather. But you were ready for it. You didn't bat an eye. Take care of that lease renewal on the 48th Street place, will you? It comes up on the 12th. Right. Well, I guess that does it, Pete. I better be on my way. Oh, and another thing, Eddie. Hmm? Uh, while you're downtown, drop by the bank and pick up my will, will you? Your will? Yes. I'd like to look it over. Okay. I'll bring it up this afternoon. You're not going to ask me why? Well, I I think that's your business, Pete. Yeah. I'm glad you look at it that way. You know, I've done a lot of thinking during the last few months, Eddie. I suppose a man gets a little philosophical when he passes the 65 mark. Everything suddenly seemed a little silly to me. Silly? What do you mean? Oh, sweating and straining to pile up another million before I die working for someone 3,000 miles away whom I've never seen. I'm afraid I don't understand. <laughs> Naturally, you don't. You've never asked me about my will, Eddie, and I can't help but admire you for it. But uh, what's this about working for someone you've never seen? The beneficiary. Oh. Name of Shelby Gordon, living in Vancouver, British Columbia. 
Only living relative I have, by the way. Not even a blood relation. Eddie, I've... I've come to admire you very much. I like you. Like the way you do things. Well, thanks, boss. I, I think I... I've found something in you, Eddie. Oh? Something I've never had before. Something I've never been able to buy. What's that? Friendship. So, that's why I want you to get out the will. I'm making you my beneficiary. And that was it, Eddie. Two years almost to the day. And there's a new will, signed, sealed, and witnessed, with your name in the right place, simply because no one else in town was smart enough to see that old Peter Jackson was a pushover for the right boy. It's legal now. You send off the new will to the recorder's office, and Peter writes a personal letter to notify the former beneficiary in Vancouver because that's the way he does business. There's nothing between you and that five million Eddie but time. That was January. Then, on a bright afternoon in mid-April, he does something with words he could have done better with a baseball bat. You walk into his office, bright and cheery as usual, and he looks up from his desk, smiling. Oh, Eddie... I'm glad you came. Got some news for you. What is it this time? We buying another brick heap? <laughs> no, something more important than that. Now, wait a minute. Let me guess. You put another deal over on Hamilton. <laughs> You'd never guess in a million years, Eddie. I'm getting married. Huh? Married? <laughs> I told you you'd never guess. Yeah, you uh, were right. Decided I'd been a bachelor too long. Sounds silly, doesn't it? Getting married for the first time at 65... Still, I've heard of others. Who is she? A young lady. Tenant of mine in the Riverside Drive place. A young woman, huh? Yes. Why? How young? 40, 45? I said young Eddie. Marsha's 24. 24? Oh, now, wait a minute. I know what you're going to say. No, but Pete, Don't you... Don't say it. I want you to meet Marsha first. Okay. Better get ready. She's meeting us in the Astor Lounge in half an hour. No congratulations. Your suggestion was a good one, boss. Suppose I meet her first, huh? With the prologue of Two Year Plan, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange tale by The Whistler. If you were buying something that cost $100, you'd make pretty sure you were getting the very best quality for your money, wouldn't you? Well, if you're an average driver, you spend about $100 a year for gasoline. But how can any driver measure the quality of a gasoline? Why, easy. Look at it this way. If a gasoline helps your motor run more efficiently, it also helps you get more mileage, right? which explains why we're so proud of the fact that Signal is known from Canada to Mexico as the go-farther gasoline. But even more important to you is what makes Signal's mileage possible. The increased engine efficiency that gives you quicker starting, faster pickup, and smooth, knock-free power, you see? It's these same features which give you extra driving pleasure that also give you extra mileage you can measure with your speedometer. Just you switch to Signal for a few fillings and let the performance of your own car show you what more and more drivers are discovering. In gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. Yes, Eddie, your client and friend, Peter Jackson, could have done it better with a baseball bat. Somehow, though, you managed not to show the shock, the sinking feeling inside you as you stood there in his office while he calmly told you he'd uh, gone off the deep end. 
You listen to him talk about Marsha McElroy in the taxi on the way to the Astor. And by the time the two of you walk into the lobby, you figure your chances of holding on to that five million, if the marriage goes through, are about those of a lame goat in the Kentucky Derby. You follow Peter into the lounge, and suddenly he's saying, Marsha, dear, I want you to meet Mr. Davis, my attorney. Eddie, Marsha McElroy, my fiancée. Hello, Mr. Davis. Peter has told me so much about you. <laughs> What's the matter, Eddie? <laughs> Cat got your tongue? Hmm? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Hello, Miss McElroy. And you know at that moment that she holds all the cards you have and several more. Yes, Eddie. You've seen beautiful women in your time, but nothing ever to compare with Marcia. With her jet black hair and creamy skin, and eyes that seem to change from blue to violet to purple. The kind of eyes that make you stutter and wobble at the knees. And Peter is proud of her. You can see that, too. She leaves the two of you alone for a moment over your coffee and cigars, almost as if she knew you were waiting for an opportunity to discuss her. Well, Eddie, what about the congratulations now? She's uh, very charming, Pete. Quite beautiful, too. Mm-hmm. You approve? You mind if I speak frankly? Oh, you've got a right to. You're my best friend. She's marrying you for your money. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Look, she's 24 and you're 65. Now, does that make sense? Go on, Eddie. Well, two months after your marriage, she'll be after everything you've got. And if you don't give it to her... You'll find yourself defendant in a separation suit, and she'll be using those those gorgeous eyes of hers on a jury. I think you're wrong. Okay, okay, I'll make you a little bet. I'll draw up a marriage contract. It isn't very usual nowadays, but it'll save you paying through the nose later. If Marsha marries you in the face of the kind of marriage contract I draw, I'll I'll eat crow until it comes out of my ears. Now, that's fair enough, isn't it? You'll give us your blessings, then? Pete, if she signs that contract, you can make me number one flower girl. Good. Bring it around tomorrow. I'll have her there to sign it. Well, Mr. Davis, Peter's been telling me you think I should sign some sort of agreement before we're married. Uh, yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I, I have it right here. Uh, I, I, I think it's best to sort of clarify things ahead of time and... and uh... Oh, stop hemming and hawing, Eddie. I've already told Marsha why you thought she should sign it. She has no objections at all. Peter, you're embarrassing, Mr. Davis. Come on, Eddie. Let's see it. Oh, it looks so legal. Well, <laughs> briefly, Miss McElroy, it, it provides for the amount of money you ought to have as an allowance while you're married. And, uh... Well, it also provides for any alimony or claim for support in the event of a divorce or separation. I see. And how much is it to be? Well, the the allowance is $75 a week. And in the event of divorce or separation, nothing. Well, what do you think, Marsha? Do I have to sign it as is? You mean you have some objection? Well, I I suppose I do. Oh? What is it, Marsha? Well, I... I think the allowance is entirely too much. You better make it $50. After all, Peter, with you to take care of me, what in the world would I do with $75 a week? No, Eddie. You'll never understand it. You can't believe she's genuine. Yet there it was, right in front of you in black and white. And you're more confused than ever, because deep inside you, mixed up with the dollars and cents, tangled with your rivalry with her for the five million, you know you're in love with her, just as lost as Peter is in those deep blue eyes. There's only one possible answer, of course. She's like you are, playing it the smart way. Concentrating on that five million dollar inheritance. It's three weeks after the wedding before you get another chance to be with her alone. 
Peter had called that he wouldn't be at the office all day, and you're working there alone when she comes in. Well, Marcia. Hello. How's the bride? Happy, thank you. What brings you downtown? Well, let's see. Are the two things or three? <laughs> First of all, Peter has a cold. A cold. Oh. Secondly, he asked me to do a few errands for him. And? And? And third? Yes. Now, yeah, bite what? I thought you might ask me to lunch. Oh, sounds great. What are you working on? A copy of Peter's will. Oh, then. Yes, yes, that. Now that he's married, you know, there'll have to be some provision for you one way or another. Does it? Oh, come on now. Let's not go through that again. No, huh? no, I'm interested. Yeah, I should think you would be. That's why you married him, isn't it? You're being rather cruel. Oh, now drop it, will you? We're alone here. You can let down your hair. Oh, I admit you threw me an awful curve with that marriage contract. As a rule, you know, gold diggers will sacrifice the long pull in favor of ready cash. Please, Eddie. Okay. I'm sorry. Don't you see? I'm trying to make him happy, Eddie. Trying to give him something to believe in. Can you understand that? No. There's no way I can convince you? Yes, yes. There's one way. Well, what's that? Sign away your interest in the estate. I see. Uh-huh. You're genuine, though, aren't you? You're a real friend to him. You don't care about his money. What's that got to do with it? Well, he told me you're the current beneficiary in his will. Oh? How'd you get that out of him? Third degree or thumb screws? Did you have to say that? Oh, I'm sorry. You see, I can't help wondering about you, Eddie. Yeah, well, I'll leave that up to Peter. Well, he's wondering, too. You seem so concerned about the marriage. What'd you tell him? Nothing. Mm, I see. Would I convince you if I signed away my interest in the will? After that, baby, I'd believe anything. And you'd convince me if you signed away yours. I already told you that the money didn't make any difference to me. What about you? He's my best friend. Does that answer your question? There's only one way you can answer it, Eddie. We can go to him together and tell him we want the will restored to its original state. Just as it was before he met either of us. You mean leave his money to that, that, that Shelby Gordon in Vancouver? That's right. Oh. Well, which is it? Peter as a friend or his money? I'm sure he'll be glad to know. Do you really mean that? You, you'd give it all up for... Of course I do. Oh, no, no. You're not human. You're not human at all. You're out of this world. Do you believe in me now? Oh, it just doesn't make sense, Marsha. You're young. You're the... Well, you're the most beautiful girl I ever saw in my life. Peter's 65. I told myself the will was the only possible answer. You've been terribly hard to convince. Oh, they don't come like you. Not, not even in dreams. Uh, you're awfully sweet. I don't need to tell you, I guess. Women have a way of knowing, anyhow. Marsha, I... Please, please don't say it. It isn't right. I'm sorry. I'm not used to playing the second string. I just want you to remember that... that after Pete's gone, I'll... I'll be around, waiting. I'll remember that. Well, are we going to see Peter about changing the will back to the original beneficiary? Yeah. You know, you're not only beautiful, Marshy, you're smart. If I refuse, he disinherits me anyway, because my motives aren't pure... Ah, uh, you win. Let's go see Peter. At first... What? Lunch. Well, Eddie, you have to believe in her now, don't you? There just aren't any other answers. The two years you invested in Peter Jackson went for nothing. The dreams of the five million dollars fell to pieces before this girl whose only weapon was honesty. And somehow you find you can take it. One look from those blue eyes and you'd buy her Grant's tomb and make a down payment on the Brooklyn Bridge. A week after the new will is signed, reinstating Shelby Gordon of Vancouver, the original beneficiary... Peter calls to say he's not feeling well again and asks if you'd mind driving her home after an afternoon of shopping. It's been awfully sweet of you to drive me home, Eddie. 
Uh, Marsha. Yes? Oh, I better skip it, I guess. What are you trying to tell me, Eddie? You've started to say something three times in the last five minutes. Well, Marsha, it's, it's about the will. Oh, again? Yeah, again. Now, believe it or not, I'm only thinking of you this time. What is it now? Well, it's not fair to you. Oh. No, don't look at me that way. He ought to provide for you. you, you you've got a legal right to it. I told you I don't. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You might as well know all of it. Now, the will is signed and witnessed on page three. I drew it up that way. Mm. It's still down in my office safe. I've got a right to keep it there because I'm Peter's executor. But I don't see what Well, it's just is... this. The beneficiary is shown on page two. It'll make no difference whatsoever to Peter if I draw up a new page with... with you as beneficiary. Why, Eddie... Well, that'd be forgery. I know it. For you, I'd take the chance. Look, he doesn't care a rap for this, this Shelby Gordon in Vancouver. He's never even seen him. I don't want it, Eddie. I don't want you to touch it. Is that clear? You mean you'd expose me if I did? Why, I don't know. Well, here we are. You've got to promise me, Eddie. No, let's not talk about it here. Now, wait a minute. Look, here comes the maid. Mrs. Jackson. Mr. Jackson! Something's wrong. Oh, Mrs. Jackson, I've been trying to get you. What's the matter? It's Mr. Jackson. He's had a stroke. Oh, Peter! It's awful. Did you get a doctor? Yes, he's up there now. I'm afraid Mr. Jackson's gone. Oh, Eddie, come on. We'd better hurry. No, no. I've got to get back to the office. Sir, may I... Don't argue with me. Go up and talk to the doctor. I told you I've got to get back to the office. And there's a good reason, isn't there, Eddie? As you race down the parkway toward town, page two of the will falls into place in your mind. Only the three of you knew the context because you'd been clever enough to call in the witnesses only for the signatures. Yes, Eddie, you knew you'd never have a chance with your own name there, but with Marsh's, the two-year plan might pay off after all. It takes you only a few minutes to draw up the new page and insert it between the others, replacing the black ribbon just as it was before, and carefully put it back in the safe. You still aren't sure of Marsha, but with $5 million at stake, you know it's worth the gamble. The two of you meet at the funeral and sit side by side during the services. But you know that now isn't the time to tell her, that you'll have to wait until later... After you filed the will for probate. Here you are. Mr. Jackson's death came so unexpectedly, I, I'd planned to bring the will down this week, but... Mm. Uh, well, properly executed, witnessed, and so on. No, I don't think there'll be any difficulty. Mrs. Jackson be the natural beneficiary, of course. Yes, of course. Hello, Anna. Mrs. Jackson in? Why, didn't you know? Know what? She's gone away. Left right after the funeral. Where? She didn't say. Poor thing was pretty hard hit by Mr. Jackson's death, you know. Expect she's gone up to the mountains or somewhere. Oh, she left a note for you. A note? Where is it? You'll find it right there on the hall table. A note? What's she writing notes for? Hmm. Dear Eddie, I'm writing you this because I'm leaving now for good and I know we'll never see each other again. Thanks so much for your kind services. I appreciate everything you've done more than I can say. It was strictly business, you know. So I want you to send me a bill. You're a smart lawyer and a wonderful friend. Cordially, Marsha Jackson. Cordially, Marsha Jackson. Cordially. Is there something wrong, Mr. Davis? Anna, you want to know what the nastiest word is in the English language? What? What, please, sir? I... Cordially, Anna. Cordially. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, a question. What would you think of a driver who deliberately did something that clogged up his motor with six times as much carbon and wore out his cylinders 50% faster than necessary? Well, get ready for a shock, because that's just what you're doing if you're still using old-fashioned straight motor oil. Listen to these facts. 
In exhaustive road and laboratory tests, today's finest straight motor oil was compared with the amazing new type signal lubricant that combines five scientific compounds with 100% pure paraffin based signal premium motor oil. The result? The motors using signal premium oil actually showed only one-sixth as much carbon and one-third less cylinder wear. Now get that. Motors stayed six times cleaner. Cylinder wear was reduced one-third with new signal premium motor oil. No wonder drivers who want to keep wear down and performance up are switching from old-fashioned straight motor oil. Better make your next oil change a change for the better. Change to the new type signal lubricant that's your guarantee of a sweeter running motor. Signal Premium Motor Oil. Now back to the Whistler. So she's gone, Eddie. All the dreams, all the visions of you and Marsha and Peter Jackson's five million dollars are gone. Vanished into thin air. And for the first time in your life, you have to admit, someone made a sucker out of you. The will's gone in for probate now, and you have a choice to make. Either you can let it stand and allow Marcia to collect the estate, or you can set things right, admit to a forgery, and perhaps give the state a chance at a two-year plan of its own. For three days, it churns around in your mind, keeps you from anything else. Then, with the reading of the will only a day off, you make your decision and walk into the district attorney's office. He's interested in what you have to say. Well, that's it. I was in love with her. I think it was more that, at the end at least, than anything else. I wanted to see her get what was coming to her. And naturally, you hope that the... Yeah, two yeah, you... yeah, there's no point in denying it. Now that it's over, I want to set things straight. Now, don't get me wrong, D.A., it's not because I'm so honest. Uh, you just don't want to let her make a sucker out of you, huh? That's right. She has no claim on the estate. The money belongs to a distant relative, a guy named Shelby Gordon. Lives in Vancouver. I have the genuine pages of the will right here. Oh, good. Incidentally, I, I don't think you'll have to worry about the forgery charge, Eddie. Doesn't make much difference anyway. And... What do you mean? Look, I don't know what league you play in, but five million bucks is a big difference to me. <laughs> what did you call her, Eddie? A beautiful question mark? Yeah. Well, a probate court called yesterday. Asked us to check on him. You see, there was a reason why she came to New York and married Peter Jackson after he'd made a new will in your favor. What? We thought there might be a loophole somewhere. Possible fraud. But there isn't any. She's too smart. You see... Before she came here, she had her name legally changed to Marsha McElroy. Her real name was Shelby Gordon. Lives in Vancouver. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Monday at 9. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure. Drive at sensible speeds. Be courteous and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life. Possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Loreen Tuttle and Gerald Moore. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen. Story based on an idea by George Fass. Music by Wilbur Hatch. And was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>